surface waters, the Lapahas, Attila, St. Mary's, Suwannee, and Withlacoochee. And then the upper Florida is the primary groundwater source. Y'all really can't change any of that. That is what it is. Water resources of the region. This is where we got into some of the details and some of the information that you were provided. We looked at uh, how the water resources were being used. Uh, in, in 2005, the water supply was totaled about 175 million gallons a day. Uh, and then it's primarily agriculture, but the vast majority. And then in the various categories, again, I'm going to need, i got to pull this because I can't read the city plays, y'all. i got to get my eyes checked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, 48 million gallons a day of surface water, which was 28, 27%, and 128 million gallons a day of groundwater. Um, in surface water, 98% of that was to agriculture. 48, 48 million gallons a day of surface water to agriculture, and 1 million uh, a day for industrial uses. The groundwater withdrawal, 70 MGDs uh, to agriculture, 36 to municipal, 10 to industrial, and 11 million gallons a day uh, called, under a category called self-supply. And then wastewater treatment uh, in, in 2005, 32 million gallons a day of point source discharge, 4 million gallons a day into land application system, and 23 million gallons a day into on-site system. Good. Can I ask you, uh, no. That's, um, that's some of the things that we're going to revisit. I think that I'm going to revisit that with Ken, Ken and Ken. Yes. Food, so. Yeah, with you. Well, I, I was thinking, you know, as we talk about the, the uh, as, as technology reduced the, the use of water and agriculture, I mean, I, this was actually based on the permits, not the actual. Well, uh, well, it was based off. Uh, yeah, well, it was that's based. Hooks it was hooks. Jim hooks. Uh, that's that's where they took uh, acres grown and put typical water use on that. So that was not that was outside type of the crops the, and the uh, where they're used because the permits only have the, the pump capacity and the acreage on there. Right. And actually, you know, so that was actually used. Like it took cotton acreage and determined about what the average use of cotton. Uh, of yeah, water they did it for a wet year, dry year, and an average year. About about three thousand are consistently being being reported. A um, number of different a number of different reasons for that. Um, so six, you know, we have 20, 22,000 permits. About sixty percent of those are metered. Um, a lot of Soil and Water Commission cannot find a lot of of these permitted sites because they're movable surface water pumps. Uh, so the commission goes out in November to read uh, with Forestry Commission, and um, you know that's when the pumps have typically been pulled so pulled so th there's a number of uh, reasons why not every permit's been issued not to mention that that's always been dependent on funding and it hasn't received any funding really uh, over the past few years uh, for new meters so they've been concentrating in, on uh, maintenance and repair primarily for the past few years so we have a the Flint River Basin is about a hundred percent um, metered. The next best basin would be here in the Swanee. I don't have the percentage of, of it here. Um, and then it thins out as you move towards the coastal region and above the fall line very, very little other than golf courses and they meter themselves. So um, that, that's how, that's, that's where that status is. But um, that data, each year from the commission comes to my office and it does get better every year. It, in, it increases in volume and, and I immediately send that to Dr. Wei Zing who is, um, the, Jim Kennedy today will be the groundwater uh, guy and Wei Zing is the surface water guy and we'll have him down I believe at the next, the next meeting. Um, and he and his team take that data and integrate it into their models and we're currently looking at um, 
a number of different projects that would allow us to, to have his models improved by looking at timing and seasonality of, of the use, because that was what, what came out of the first meeting, is where your models see, uh, you, know, can have a, you can have a, a farm pond that's 10 miles off a stream, yet the model reads it as a direct stream withdrawal. And that's not right. That's making that number, that gap, inflated. Um, so we're working, working on that data that the Commission has given us um, and a number of coordination or cooperation with a number of other uh, stakeholders, farmers, with some projects like a farm pond project, some other things, trying to get that timing and seasonality reflected better in his models. Right. Let me kind of ask a question I had in my mind. Uh, is the fact that maybe we're gathering more data and doing better number crunching or we're getting a better uh, answer for what's actual use? Absolutely. Um, I think we have a pretty good handle on what's actually being used. Um, and, 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 you know, you, you really don't have to meet her the whole state to find out what's, what folks are using, but now that we've got enough data out there and we are working with USGS and so is the commission on well, if you're, you know, if the major crop in this area is, is cotton, you know, and you, that climate is X, you know how much water is being put out on, on, in that area. It's pretty representational of what's being put out, in, you know, amongst other farmers in that, that area. And um, so I think we, you know, as far as crop water need, we, we understand that. And then we've gotten enough information from uh, the past seven, eight years of, of, um, of the water data to have a really good understanding as to how much water is going to be used under certain conditions. Now the next part of that is what you said earlier as well, what happens when you take that technology and you merge it, does that water use goes that go down? The crop needs, as you know, what it needs. So there, that number sort of stays where it is. It's how much is lost or wasted after that. And yes, that is something that is improving. The problem with that is that a lot of that money comes through federal funding. And Soil and Water Commission happens to be, and so are the district uh, soil and water supervisors, are the, one of the pass-throughs for that type of money and how it's distributed. And the NRCS, the federal rules are that, that the state can't come in and, and, or nobody can come in and ask, well, who are you giving money to? How much water are they saving and all that? Because that relationship with the feds is is built on trust. And if you start, if they, they start handing that data out um, to the state or anybody else, then that would probably violate that trust. So one of the things we'd like to do in the future and currently working on is improving the relationship with NRCS through the Soil and Water Commission so that we hope we'll be able to, to quantify water savings in the future without it saying, Andy say this much and, and Ben say this much. We don't want that. We want to maybe do it at a larger level that can't be tracked back to uh, um, track back to individuals, much like we do the Soil and Water Commission data now. When that's requested of them or from me, I can't release it on an individual basis. I can release it in a, in a larger hub level. So that, that's where we're trying to head with that data too. But right now I get asked all the time, how much water are you saving here? I can't tell you because I can't get my hands on that information for better or for worse. Cliff, going back, we started a while ago, you said, uh, you said the number of permits in the issue in Georgia, and then you said the percentage of them, the number, the number of them that were meeting. Uh, what was that? The, we have tw about 23,000 permitted withdrawals at, at surface and, and, and groundwater. About 70, 75 percent are in the groundwater. The other percentage is, is surface water. Of those surface water, the majority of those are mobile pumps that get pulled, so the commission can't find those. So when, when I say that only 60% of our permits, permitted withdrawals, are metered, the vast majority of those that are not metered are because of that reason, because they're surface water pumps that can't you can't go out and find. Unfortunately, resource-wise, the commission only has the, 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 the resources to get out there about once a year and read those. And that's in November, uh, November, early December, and by then the pumps are usually full. I'll speak up. So, important commission, um, you know, our AHC took a meeting with all of the budget cuts and all throughout the years. Um, like in my office in Statesboro, we cover 34 counties. Well, we had three individuals in our office, down to one myself right now, to be. Um, this past winter, I read meters in Bull and Chickens in Scribbling County. And it was easily probably 20% of those meters that you could not locate. 
damaged in some way, or you, know, just, you weren't in the right spot because of GPS coordinates that were assigned to them, were off. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of problems on that end. I think as far as getting yeah, accurate reading on a large scale, but at the same time, you're working with enough to kind of make an estimate off of what you do have. You know, all the newer wells, not on the I don't know what year it started, but all the newer wells are metered because you have to put a meter in when you put one. The old ones are, are not metered. I've got one in the old one is not metered, and you've got one put in in the 80s and it's not metered. It never, never came to this. Now, do you have to meter the four inch or just paper? No four inch. No four inch. Good Six inch. inch above. That well you just put in for me is not metered. You ain't got that one, but. <laughs> I did get a face in the message. I thought they were only a I thought they were only a few They said it was was out too. Leave it right now. That's right. If you just fill up the pond, they're not metered. They're metered out of the pond. They're metered out of the pump when it goes from the pond to the the yeah, statute says that the state is interested in applied water. The water is actually applied to the crop. So when you have that well that goes to the pond yeah. and it comes out, and it's quite frankly, some of them are metered in some ways, and some of them are metered at the at the pivot themselves. There's a number of different ways that they have to, that, 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 that based on limited resources, the commission has to make a, a decision on some of those things out in the field. What's the best way to meet that objective? And somewhat sometimes it's different than the. Uh, than the farm that they just left. What you watering, Darwin? Uh, Black bears. That, that's what you missed. He said he put him a well in and he didn't put a meter on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we get a report on those meters. And the only report I get is like 212 and 12 inches per acre. I didn't put 212 in. They don't give you an acreage, so I guess that's just a, you have to take your acres. They're just interested in total volume that's going on. That report's just sold from sold on acres. So you just give us the total inches, and that's I have to divide my acres in that to get how much I put on an acre. Yeah, okay. Uh, another, another, not fussing to you, but another issue that report is that it gives you those numbers by permit. So you got to scramble around and try to match that permit back up to that well. Yeah. It's sometimes a good challenge. You know, we try to add on forms, you know. Uh, how you refer to a certain location, I know that the permit is, but you know, the crew that sends out those usage statements, I, mean, I don't know what they're, how they do that. Um, well, on all the new wells now, you get GPS coordinates on So I think that um, the state would like to have with this, with this slide, um, and, and we've had some good conversation about it. Are there specific questions that you would have for EPD when you revise your plan about this information? Oh, yeah. So this would definitely be something, what would some of those be? Yeah. We're, we uh, trying to make a plan in 
that I, that I know of, we don't have a way to quantify that. We have that information, but it's back from the year 2000. Yeah. And it was a DNR, University of Georgia publication. And frankly, I, I, I'm still using it, but it is, it's dated. It's, it's dated. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the things we might want to ask for is some way, some method or some funding for correlation of conservation efforts. If the end of the Infrastructure is basically there. Now we need to go to well, what actually is that infrastructure doing for us? Look at it. I think it's maybe a wash because just what they can do is yeah. they were not there in 2005. That's true. The new pivots that Scott was talking about weren't there in 2005. So that's really the last question of purpose because. What you really need to ask me is how many how many acres have been expanded, not how many sheets of paper we've issued, because that's what matters. And I'll tell you what, we wanted Mark Masters to be, Mark Masters is going to uh, uh, do the ag water forecast demand update, and Mark's going to be with us at the next meeting. Okay. Now, he, and, I, and I'm handling that project too with Mark, and we went, we went and talked to, about how we need to approach this, and and in some areas of state, frankly, we busted that 20% potential irrigated acreage increase that Jim Hook predicted in some areas. And in some areas, they're basically the same. But one of the things that we want to do with that, that irrigate, we know that in some regions, especially crops, blueberries, other things, have taken off. So what we're going to try to do with the limited monies that we have is find out what areas have the potential to have been busting that 20% that open and do acreage updates on the demand forecast. And so when Mark gets here and we start hearing about how that's going and what information is collected, that's probably going to spark a bunch of questions in our minds about different ge geographic areas of the state and then or, oop, what are you seeing going on here, here, and here? But frankly, that's that's going on in uh, you know, the acreage. 2010-2011, uh, folks started just cutting, cutting trees down put land into production and, and frankly a lot of them not asking permission first um, coming in after the fact so getting our hands around how much and where that acreage has expanded is is a task that's outside of my staff's ability but we're doing contract work with the water planning and policy center of, of ASU we get coordinated work from the uh, soil and water commission so from our different partners that are out out there they're letting us know what's going on and seeing what's going on and also aerial imager we get that updated every year so my staff what we do uh, basically is take aerial imagery from let's just say from 2005 to today 
and they can look on that thing anywhere in the state and see exactly what land's been cleared and what pivots have gone in and, and so which is how Jim Hook did it in the first place he quadrant off every county of the state and went through and found out well what land's being irrigated and what crop is going in to be irrigated we do that same thing every day but just not doesn't do that all day you know just when somebody comes in and needs to do permit let me um, I'm going to stop I'm I'm going to switch our discussion a little bit. I'm going to ask Jim or Liz who's going to go first. 